Hey, welcome to my devlog. My name's Dustin, and I'm coding a 3D sneaking game from scratch. I'm also working on a 3D action game about shifting between different realities, but today we're talking about espionage. In this devlog, I'll cover the following topics. For art, I created a custom pixel art font and began working on the heads-up display elements. For coding, I made a user interface API, a constraint-based layout system, and a block-based animation system. And for gameplay, I started the inventory system and added a laser to the handgun. Let's jump in, starting with the UI results. So at the bottom left, you'll see the resulting UI so far. It's using view hierarchies with images and labels. The UI is constraint based, so it retains proper size and position even when the screen resolution and shape are changing. The handgun is an image from the HUD texture, which I painted as silhouettes. Each weapon is 16 pixels tall. I'm trying to emphasize the retro aesthetic with the UI, so I want everything to be pretty low resolution. And that extends to the text as well. I decided to make a custom font, and it's as small as I could get it while having it work well in paragraphs. The character height is 5 pixels, and the line height is only 9 pixels. Because this font is so tiny, I decided to handle alignment in the texture. But my text layout code does support alignment, so I could move the characters closer together to make the texture smaller. But it's so small already, so I'm not really worried about it. Here's some example code for the UI. If we run it, we see a yellow rectangle. If the API looks familiar, that's because it's influenced heavily by Apple's UI kit framework. I wanted the UI to be powerful, so I designed it similar to an application framework. Let's run through the code. First, we create a view. Make it yellow. Add it to the screen. Describe its location. And describe its size. And that's the basics to add anything to the UI. Now we'll add a subview, make it orange, and pin it to the corner of its parent view. When we run it, we see the orange square. Now we'll round the corners of the parent view by adding a mask. As expected, the corners are rounded, but the orange square also gets a corner rounded, because it's being clipped by its parent view. Let's increase the corner radius to show the clipping a little better. Since the corner radius is half the view's height, we get a capsule shape. Now let's add a label so we can see the new font in action. We don't need the orange square, so we'll change that to a label and refactor the name. We also don't need the size constraints, because the label will automatically size itself without them. But we'll change the position so it's centered in the parent view. And we'll assign it some text to draw. And it's a bit small. This is because the line height of this font is only 9 pixels. We'll increase the font size, increase the parent view size, and change the text color. The result is much easier to read, though they're not the best color choices. Now we'll add an image to the screen. Image views are a view subclass, so they work the same as any view. We just need to assign it an image. An image is a reference to a texture and a bounds inside the texture, so a texture can contain multiple images. And we'll pin it to the bottom of the capsule. And the black is too dark to see. So let's assign the image view a tint color. Doing this will tell the renderer to fill the image view bounds with the tint color while using the image as a mask. We'll make it white. We can see it now, but it's tiny, so let's scale it up. The image view automatically prefers to be the size of the provided image, which is only 16 pixels tall. To make it bigger, we simply need to add horizontal and vertical size constraints. We'll make it four times larger. We can also move it down by adding a constant value to the vertical position constraint. Much better. For this devlog's intermission, I'm heading down to the barn to stack some hay. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is an excellent time to hit that button. 
If you'd like to follow my progress between devlogs, or just hang out, then hop on my Discord. Link in the description. Oh, you go around. Alright, so let's build an animation example. What we're doing is creating two nested functions. One represents the start position and the other represents the end position. We'll make an animation that moves the image view down and scales it up. I made my animation system block based. What happens is any code executed inside the animation block will automatically get animated. There's no special API for animations, it's the same code as we saw earlier building the UI. It will simply be animated when it is inside this special animation block. The animation will also execute a block when it's done. We call the other function here which will cause the animation to loop forever. And finally we call the first function once to start the loop. And just like that, we have a repeating animation. To show the dynamicness of the constraint animations, we'll change the yellow view's position, but change nothing else. Now, the label doesn't support animations yet. So it's updating instantly, which is what will happen when any code that isn't animatable is changed from inside an animation block. However, the image view is now sliding up and down with the yellow view while also changing distance from the yellow view and changing size. We were able to create a fully dynamic, complex animation with very little code. For fun, we'll also change the opacity of the image view. And just like that, the image view fades in and out. There's still a lot I want to do with these APIs. For example, I'd like to add support for transformations. Being able to rotate and scale an entire view hierarchy with a single line of code would be really nice. And the text system needs a lot of work. I currently only have single line layouts. I'll be adding support for paragraphs and pages at some point. I'd also like to support rich text, which would allow multiple fonts and text colors in a single string. So, for gameplay, I started working on the inventory. I can't put too much effort into it, because I'm not sure how gameplay is going to work just yet. For example, I've been thinking of having guards drop their weapons. This would make weapons abundant and easy to obtain. But you'll only be able to carry a few at a time, so you'll have to pick and choose which ones. Doing this will make revisiting areas more interesting, because that's where you'll be able to pick up certain types of equipment. And each weapon type will have a unique purpose. For example, the handguns will be effective at close range by giving an aim assist that becomes more accurate the closer an enemy is to the player. The assault rifle won't have any assist, but will overheat and be difficult to aim while firing in first person. And the sniper rifle will limit your turning speed in third person, so you won't be able to 360 no scope with it. The sniper rifle will also double as binoculars, so if you want them, you'll have to have this weapon on you. And I think bosses would also drop their guns. The revolver, for example, might auto aim just like the handguns, but also aim around corners by calculating a ricochet trajectory. You'll have a place to store your equipment when you're not using it, so you can easily swap between your favorites and collect all the special weapons, like from bosses. But that's it for this devlog. Stay motivated, kill your lifts, and I'll see you next time.